Good morning. I'm Kyle Knackers, and welcome to this news briefing from the 253rd National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society. Uh, and this meeting is in San Francisco. We're joined today by Dr. Natalie Tufingi from McGill University, and she'll be talking to us about her work on a maple syrup extract that enhances antibiotic action. Uh, Dr. Tufingi. Thank you, Kyle. Um, so approximately two, three years ago, we started becoming interested in the potential antimicrobial properties of maple syrup extracts. Particularly, we're interested in the phenolic fraction. Um, so we, at that time, a few years ago, we reported that uh, the phenolic extracts from maple syrup had um, s antibiotic synergies. So they were able to synergize with antibiotics in such a way that you could use a lot less antibiotics uh, to get uh, the same kill effect of bacteria. So we did this with several different bacteria. And um, essentially, we found we had found that these phenolic compounds made it easier for antibiotics to get inside the bacteria and get trapped inside the bacteria. So they had more of an uh, the antibiotics had more of an effect. Now, more recently, the work that we presented yesterday um, at the conference was um, progression uh, based on that uh, previous laboratory work, where now we've shown that these extracts actually work to protect. Uh, two different insect models. So we worked with fruit flies and moth larvae, and we found that these uh, phenolic extracts from maple syrup actually synergize with antibiotics to protect these insects from infection. So the insects actually lived uh, significantly longer um, when they were given a dosage of a maple syrup extract with their antibiotics in comparison to the insects that had been only been given antibiotics to protect them from infection. So that is essentially the scope of the work that we presented yesterday. Um, and we also have ongoing mice studies um, that we'll hopefully be able to report on uh, in about a year. Uh, are there any questions out in the audience? Uh, if you have one, raise your hand. We have a microphone that can come to you. When you get the microphone, please state your name and the um, affiliation that you're working with. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Uh, yeah, I, I did report on the work a couple of years ago. I was interested to see that you'd extended it to the flies and the moth larvae. Could you tell us by how, how much longer these um, species lived? And also, I understand you're doing some work in mice. Perhaps you could say a little bit about the work in mice too. Thank you for your question. So the work, the actually, the, I should mention the insect work uh, is done in collaboration with my collaborator, Professor Eric Desiel at the INRS Institut Armand Frappier in Laval, Quebec. And um, as I mentioned, we worked with the fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster, as well as the wax moth larvae. Um, in each case, they have different lifespans, um, but in each case, the, uh, the insects lived a few days longer um, than the insects that had only received uh, antibiotic uh, for protection against the infection. Um, unfortunately, I can't say too much about the mice study uh, because it's incomplete uh, to, to this day, but it's ongoing, and we should have some uh, interesting results to report uh, very shortly. Hello, um, this is Quan Chen from ACS Joe Daily. Uh, it's really interesting that for the maple syrup, you know, day to day, that you can actually kind of cure um, um, infections. But so here you're saying like you mostly, you know, work with um, gram negative bacteria. I was wondering like, um, do you guys like try to do any like uh, gram positive bacteria, for example, MRSA? you know, resistance of, and then like what's the mechanisms in between besides you say, you know, easier to go in uh, and then, um, trapped in the bacteria. So the question is about whether we um, explored the potential synergy of the maple syrup extracts in um, gram-positive bacteria. Um, to this day, we haven't, but uh, that's, uh, that's also a great uh, idea. It's something we would like to explore. Um, everything we've done today has been really exploratory pilot-scale research. Um, we definitely have a lot more we want to look at. Um, is certainly expanding the scope of the in vivo studies um, and, and the number of, and the different types of bacteria and the different types of antibiotics um, that we could look at. Ben Val's The Chemistry World. Have you characterized the phenolic 
contents yet. Do you know what they are? And if so, are there any particular compounds that you think are responsible for the effect, or is it the, the combination? So um, the question is about uh, the extract and whether we've characterized it. Um, so to date, we have done a preliminary characterization, I'd say, so uh, using uh, HPLC, of course. Um, so we have a, a general idea of, of, of what's in the extract. There's about 10 key components. Um, and we have done some experiments where we're just with some of the single molecules present in the extract. And uh, those single molecules uh, do give uh, results that are along the same lines as what we get with, this, with the whole extract, but just not as potent. So definitely the entire extract um, is, is more interesting for us. Um, we also tried, interestingly, we, we tried to create the extract in the lab. In other words, by purchasing the different compounds and, and mixing them in the ratios that we would find in the extract. And interestingly, when we did that, we didn't see as potent an effect. So there's something else in the extract that we need to dig a little deeper and, and find what are those other components that are giving this uh, uh, very potent effect. With the American Chemical Society, um, I, this story kind of reminds me of, of the vitamin P situation where, where they found something along with vitamin C, uh, St. Jordi per se, uh, and uh, apparently it was a minor component, in that case hesperidin, that, uh, that acted. Uh, you have any particular idea what specific uh, compound uh, are there, flavones, flavanones, or, or anything, or the glycosides? So they're, they're definitely, you know, we, one of the compounds that we have cued in on is uh, catechol. Uh, so catechol seems to be have quite a potent effect, um, but I, I, we have not investigated or explored all of the single components individually. Um, uh, there's still a lot of work to do in, in terms of, of looking at that and explore, investigating that question. Um, but that's a great question. We, we still really need to do that work and try to identify um, the, most, the most potent molecules. Um, but it seems that, you know, seeing that, we're seeing that the, this maple syrup extract has a multimodal action against the bacteria. It doesn't just um, act on one specific aspect of the bacteria. It really attacks different um, mechanisms. So for example, it, it permeabilizes the bacterial cell membrane. It knocks out anti, uh, multi-drug efflux pumps. So it's, it's very possible that it's really the different molecules in the extract that are, have different activities, and together they synergize uh, with the antibiotics. Uh, one more question. Uh, yeah. In, in the past, it's been known that high concentrations of sugars actually inhibit bacterial growth, or when, when the, you remove the sugars, they actually osmotically permit the, uh, things to get inside the bacterium and uh, kill them. Uh, have you done the, uh, uh, some uh, comparisons of your extracts and, and whole maple syrup? Um, that's a good question. So have we done comparisons with the extract and whole maple syrup? No, we have not. Uh, so the extract that we're working with, there's, there's no sugar. Um, it's, it's really a phenolic rich fraction. Um, and what's interesting about the, re what the results that we found is that we're working at below inhibitory concentrations. So in other words, the extract alone does not kill the bacteria. It, it's, it's essentially harmless to the bacteria. The bacteria, so in that sense, it's very interesting because the bacteria are potentially less likely to develop resistance to um, a group of molecules that are, are not harming them. Um, so really, what these molecules from the maple syrup are doing are just facilitating uh, the, the the job of the antibiotics. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mariam Tashwar, CTR Press. Uh, my question is about funding. Is it a publicly government funding or is it a private funding for your research? So the question is about funding. Um, uh, so this work was actually funded by, uh, mostly by my Canada Research Chair, which is a federally funded program in Canada, as well as the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada uh, by a discovery grant that I was awarded. So um, it's, it's really not um, a grant that, was, that I was awarded to study this specific question. 
It's uh, any more uh, private? No, there was there was no private funding no. Uh, for this research. Um, the actually the insect work. Um, and the ongoing mice work is also partially funded by an innovation award that I was granted by the Faculty of Engineering at McGill University. Uh, and, and this award helps support um, the engineering professors and their students in, in, in pushing their research um, that has innovative uh, potential for commercialization, for example, technology transfer. So we have an online question from Christine Sa from the American Chemical Society. She's asking, how do you envision the extract will be taken? Uh, would we take maple syrup with our antibiotics, or would there be a separate pill that people could take all the time? So I, that's a very important question. Um, I think it's important to highlight that um, we, we wouldn't necessarily take maple syrup with our antibiotics because the syrup itself, of course, has uh, uh, water and sugar. So these molecules are found in lower concentrations, of course, in the syrup. We are actually uh, isolating these molecules and using them in a concentrated fashion with the antibiotics. Um, so the way I envision it is um, either these um, phenolic molecules will be combined with the antibiotic pill uh, or it will be a separate pill that you would take with your antibiotic pill. Okay. Um, and, and also, I have a question, Katie Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. So um, the, the maple syrup extract boosts the effect of the antibiotics by how much? Like how much less antibiotic can you take? So the maple syrup extract boosts the activity of the antibiotics depending on the type of bacteria you're looking at and the type of antibiotic you're looking at. So to date, the results that we've found uh, range from about 50 to 97 percent um, decrease in the amount of antibiotic that you need to use uh, to kill the bacteria. So it really depends on the combination of which antibiotic are you looking at and which type of bacteria. And you know, those are, like I said, this is really pilot scale research. Um, we can still optimize, I think, those numbers, and we can probably get to, to much higher numbers for across the range of bacteria and antibiotics if we can just optimize um, the different composition of the extract as well. Ben Valsley, Chemistry World again. If it's affecting uh, iron pumps and, and membrane channels and so on, those tend to be one of the reasons or one of the evolutionary tricks that bacteria use to become resistant. Is it possible that this could actually be used on bacteria that are already resistant in order to allow a, an antibiotic to, to work again? That's a great question. It's something that we haven't looked at, actually. Um, and that's a great idea for future research. Thank you. I'm just interested in the idea generally that other compounds perhaps in the diet could influence antibiotic potency or perhaps suppress it. Are there other things that have been found that have similar effects? And also I'm just wondering, are there any agrochemical um, applications? Um, I guess it, it enhances it, uh, the, uh, you know, they're, they're able to resist um, the antibiotics better. So could that somehow be exploited to protect um, species that we want to protect from some of these chemicals? I don't know. Well, that's, um, that's an interesting question. Well, in, in, with respect to your question about um, kind of the ag applications, agricultural applications, one idea, you know, one of the areas where antibiotics are most heavily used is in uh, animal um, uh, husbandry, right? So um, uh, pig, pig um, 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 farming, if you will, um, uh, poultry. Uh, so there's high, high amounts of antibiotics used that are then secreted uh, to the environment uh, where they can potentially uh, contribute to the development of resistance in environmental uh, bacteria. Uh, so one area that we could potentially see this being used is in uh, dosage of antibiotics uh, to animals in, or, in order to reduce the amount of antibiotics that we're uh, giving to our animals. Um, and I forgot already the first part of your question. If other compounds had been found um, in, in other foodstuffs um, that might enhance or suppress? I'm, I 
can't remember offhand if they were uh, found from uh, foods, but there are some other compounds uh, that do synergize with antibiotics. I just can't remember offhand if they were found in foods. All right, thank you guys for coming out or, or watching online. Uh, the archived version of this session will be posted soon at bit.ly slash ACSLive underscore San Francisco. Please join us for our next pre press conference today at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time about upcycling fast fashion to reduce waste and pollution. Thanks. <laughs>